Now, as athletes, we put our bodies through an incredible amount of stress on a daily basis, but to actually reap the rewards from all that hard work, it's really important that we're giving our bodies time to heal and recover. Now, Polar, our channel partner, have kindly teamed me up with the very experienced Nick Anderson from Running With Us. Now, Nick is going to be running us through some real good top tips on how to monitor and improve your recovery. Now, Nick, you deal with a huge array of runners and triathletes, but I'm sure it's very hard to convince a very focused athlete to take a day off or a recovery day. Can you explain what the importance is of recovery? Yeah, I really can, because I think we live in a society, don't we, where harder or faster must be better. And I always say to athletes, look, training is a stimulus. It is uh, muscle damage that's been caused. You've, you've exercised, you've got everything working, but you will ultimately be judged and you will progress and the body will regenerate by the way you choose to recover. And that's the way you literally grow as a system of cells. And you need to get the recovery right so you regenerate and the body actually goes through this process of getting faster, being able to work for longer, because the recovery has been really, really good. So recovery is where the magic happens. Okay, well, with all that in mind, what is your first tip for us today with recovery? I would always track your training and have a look at your training and say, okay, today I've gone out and my easy session, whether it was swim, bike, run, it really was easy. I was in the right zone. I didn't push. I didn't suddenly get greedy or try and chase the person up ahead or I was on a treadmill and someone got on it and I had to be better than them. Put your ego in a box, recovery work is easy, easy. Regenerate, come back from it feeling better than you started. If you're doing your threshold work, don't race. Make sure your threshold is right for you in the right heart rate zones. Use your heart rate zones efficiently and stay there. And then make sure that you, on the days after or the days that follow, you listen to your body before you do the next hard day. Okay, so what happens though on those days where perhaps you get a bit carried away, a session ends up harder than you were expecting? Look, in the world of romance, there's going to be days when things are spontaneous. You're going to suddenly feel good and off you go. I know that happens, that's fine, and get out there and enjoy it. But do look at how that, or that session you describe, impacts on the rest of your week and maybe the next few weeks. If you are then putting your body in a position where you're really tired or you are not recovering well enough for the next few days, is that going to impact on your next threshold session, your next tempo ride? Something that was maybe really important in the overall structure of the plan. So have a look at your resting heart rate in the morning. Have a look at your sleep overnight. Have a look at the phases of your sleep. Um, look at muscle damage. You can now, and um, you know, the, the Polar Vantage series will measure for you uh, muscle load and muscle damage. So you may have a very good resting heart rate and you think you're good to train, but the reality is that the weight session you did or the, the harder session a day or two ago, the muscles are still uh, suffering there. They're not recovered yet. There's no regeneration to the point where you're ready to train hard. So you go out and you can't hit the wattage you want or you can't run at the pace you want and you don't know why. Well, the reason is you've recovered here cardiovascularly, but you haven't recovered in terms of muscle load. So look at recovery as a whole unit and look at the different factors of recovery and then work out whether you're ready to do the next hard day. Okay, what's your next tip for us? Sleep. Sleep is so important. It's a key part to your recovery. Really good athletes, and I've seen them over the years, are really good at sleeping. So have a look at your own personal nightly recharge. And I suppose that actually works hand in hand with us tracking the exercise data of as course. well. So it all teams together really nicely. Completely. So you track your exercise data, you see when you're training well, you see you're in the right zones, but you're tracking your recovery alongside. And if you said to me, where has the sport changed? We're not training that differently to the way we used to over the years, but we're now understanding recovery so much better and we can track it. Okay, and I know for a lot of triathletes out there juggling a heck of a lot with their training, their family, life, work, everything. So I need to say they're all getting up at silly clock in the morning and then probably training again in the evening. They may not be getting the ideal eight hours we often hear about, but does that matter? No, it doesn't because if you're sleeping for five or six hours, but you're hitting these phases, these stages of sleep, that might actually for you be enough. There may be a chance in the week, later in the week, when you can catch up even more. 
but don't go out the door when you know you're exhausted and then still try and get that ride or that session done that's going to really damage you further so it's about listening and looking at the data and understanding then how it works for you i guess that's where the coaching comes in or the intuition of the athlete right and your final tip for us nick Look at your rest throughout the year. I, I would call it a periodization of your training. Don't try and compete all year round and don't try and train hard all year round. Your week will have easy days in it. Really important. It will have rest in there. Maybe less is more. Maybe you can do more because now you realize through the training zones that you're fresh at the right time to do more volume. Try to look at your month. There ought to be, I think, an easy week every month. And in a competition phase, Please, after your main competition or after your big Ironman, take time off. Take a few weeks off. Pro athletes are brilliant at resting. Through the rest, you'll then come back and the next season or the next phase of training will be even better. I often say to people, the mountaineer stays at the top of the mountain for a short space of time. They then come back down and they regenerate in the valley and one day they go up and they climb an even higher peak. It's exactly the same for you as an athlete. Don't stay too long up there. Come back down, eat well, sleep well, and then climb the next mountain in the next season or the next big target. So what's the risk of us staying way up top there. You're going to plateau, you're more likely to get injured and you get tired and all of your performances start to either plateau as I said or gradually do this and the danger then is you train even harder to try and make up for what you think is a training issue. It's not that. If you tracked your data, you tracked your sleep, you tracked your, your muscle damage and you'd look to all your training over the months and even years, you'll see that really you just need to have better rest periods to come back and then train really well. Well, thanks ever so much for that, Nick. That was brilliant. If you guys enjoyed today's video, hit the thumbs up button. And if you'd like to see more from GTN, click on the globe and subscribe. And do enjoy the Polar Factory Tour. And please train well and rest well. Yeah, rest is important on this one. And if you'd like to see running with power and find out a little bit more on that, you can see that by clicking just down here.